It's day 44 and good things have happened today. As you can see, this leaf is looking more and more vibrant. It's 17 sixteenths of an inch long and 15 sixteenths of an inch wide. And it's sort of convex now. The middle of the leaf sticks out towards us uh, versus being concave. You know, it was sort of folded up like a spade and you know it's very clear now that these leaves are spade shaped uh, they're very good looking you know sort of like spades on a playing card and if we look elsewhere you know I, th I think there's a little bit of development in that second true leaf but at this stage you know it's just very incremental every day however um, if you look at the stem I don't think that browning or yellowing of the stem uh, with sort of these like fibrous grooved marks, you know, with a grain on it is a sign of death. You know, I think this vine is developing a woody stem. And you can see more of that towards the base. So that's not a coincidence. I think that's the way it is to give this plant some support and rigidity as the you know, the upper body of the stem essentially of the plant gets more robust and starts to weigh more and more. You need a stronger structure to support it. So those flimsy green stems that come out in the beginning with the plants um, are just not enough. So that's a good sign. You know, I thought this plant was done for at some point, but it's the only one that's pulled through since the first generation. And it's doing okay. I expect development to accelerate. I think conditions were just bad for the first uh, month or so of this experiment and that's why you know the development has been very stunted. Uh, there just wasn't enough sunlight and even now you know one and a half hours of proper afternoon sun is coming in at a very oblique angle and has to travel through a lot of atmosphere in mid-February so well it's late February now actually and you know, if this were the summer and it were getting maybe um, four or five or six or seven hours of direct sunlight, you know, in the afternoon, um, that sunlight in the summer has to travel through a lot less atmosphere, so it'll be a lot more intense, and that would make the growth a lot, lot faster. This is an amazing case. I mean, this is the first seedling I've ever seen that's germinated straight out of the soil. It's not upside down. It's not struggling. It doesn't have a seed husk attached, wrapped around its cotyledons until the end of time. And here is the case I talked about yesterday. You can kind of see that sort of kickstand I referred to in the very beginning of this experiment protruding sideways at where the stem meets the root, right on top of the soil. So um, I guess that's just sort of a natural physical mechanism to prevent uh, the plant from falling over, I guess. Um, because it's going to lean towards uh, the side that the seed husk is on. So if it does that, you know, and the seed husk is covered with wet soil, it would weigh down and bend the stalk, bend the stem. So you need that sort of organic, you know, kickstand to keep it up. Kind of like how a bicycle, if it's leaning towards one side, you would have a kickstand extended towards that side to prevent it from falling over. And here's the third seedling that's just beginning to germinate. It also has that sort of organic kickstand built in to prevent it from falling over. So this one looks to be very promising. I think it'll have no problems uh, revealing its cotyledons soon. And I think proper sunlight might be a requisite for proper germination. You know, uh, without enough heat during the day, maybe the plants just can't develop correctly or Maybe the sunlight itself has to be very intense for uh, things to go right. And of course there are the ones that are doomed to failure. I think these two that we're looking at, not the one on the, the left, that's a successful one that I just talked about. Um, so these two are upside down. And as you can see their root systems uh, are not properly established. Uh, there's a chance that they might survive, but I doubt it. Here's another case of an upside down seedling. See how threadbare that root connection is to the soil. It's so dried out and so thin that I doubt any water can get through it. Those cotyledons and the stem are basically operating and photosynthesizing. Um, 
probably only surviving because I'm spraying water twice a day, once in the night and once before I leave for work in the morning. So maybe some water can be uh, absorbed right through the very bottom of the stem where the root mass begins, but I doubt any water is getting from the soil to the plant. See, in this case, I still don't know what's going on. Um, if the plant has an established root system, it'll do fine, but I somehow doubt it. I think this is just a case of something gone wrong. Okay, it's day 45, and as you can see, there are some positive surprises. So there are four new seedlings that seem to be doing well. Uh, this is one of them. It's going straight up. Here's another one. Its seed husk is covered with mud. but It's doing pretty well. You can see the roots at the bottom. Uh, they're not quite under the soil, but you know all the secondary roots are growing into the soil. So this is the one that has no problem spreading its wings, so to speak. So I mentioned this a day or two ago, and basically it's the first seedling I've ever seen in this pot that just came out and had no problems like this. The other ones took a little while before they could get rid of their seed husk, or they just had the seed husk attached forever and ever. Nearby we have another seedling that seems to be still have its seed husk attached, so this one could be one of those ones that's problematic, but uh, we'll see what happens. It seems to be on the right trajectory. The other seedlings seem mostly hopeless due to inversion, but this one has a big root ball that is continuing to develop. I've been spraying water every day, and because of that I think it's gotten enough water to the point where it's sending out secondary roots in all directions to try to find the soil and you know at least at the bottom one of them is so I think this plant may have a future and here's an example of another seedling that seems to have trouble um, I didn't notice anything I thought it was a dead seed maybe until I saw those roots so I think something's going on there it might be another plant in the making as for the oldest most successful plant um, the stem is continuing to get more woody and I think there's some growth in the second true leaf and in the shoot ape clomera stem although I haven't done measurements on that so it's just a visual you know kind of a feel and the main true leaf is doing okay okay it's day 46 and as you can see we're having a repeat of history uh, there are four clear winning seedlings that are new and the ones we're looking at of course are here, 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 and here. And the other ones that aren't doing too well are basically inverted and they're still trying to find their way down uh, the roots and establish themselves and I believe only one is doing that correctly and the other three will probably die. And I also see another one just coming out of the ground, uh, I'll zoom in later. So with regards to this older plant, it's still 17 sixteenths of an inch long and 15 sixteenths of an inch wide. And I suspect that would be greater if I were to flatten out the leaf. It's now convex instead of concave. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't want to damage the plant or even risk doing that. And the second true leaf seems to be growing a little bit bigger. I'm just going by, uh, you know, visual cues here. You know, I don't measure that thing every day and the shoot apical meristem is somewhat you know on its way to generating a third and a fourth leaf so the stem continues to become more woody and that's a good sign in my opinion and this plant is maturing it's very slow but it's making progress I think the problem was in the beginning conditions were so poor until I allowed this plant to get sunlight about an hour and a half a day that you know, it was basically on the verge of dying after stagnation. But I think with all this uh, true sunlight, it finally has the sunlight intensity it needs to carry out proper photosynthesis, although it's still not enough to grow as fast as it normally would during the spring or summer outdoors. This is a good comeback story of a plant that started out inverted. It was actually kind of growing maybe sideways, or somehow it ended up being so. I think it was originally inverted, and... It has its cotyledon stuck in a husk and it has a root ball facing outwards that was looking like it was going to die and dry up before I sprayed water every day, twice a day. Here's an example of what I believe to be a plant that I never really saw. It was basically being choked and uh, smothered underground. It probably was inverted, although I'm not sure. It looks like it's just dead. At this point, it could be right side up. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely rotting. 
And here we have some roots. Uh, I don't know where they're coming from. Maybe that seed right here. Um, I don't know why they would travel, you know, uh, seemingly up or laterally through the soil when they should be just going down.